Yes, sir. We back. With another episode Two of in a Free week. Game. Two in a week? Two in a week. Free Game. We no longer doing Free Game Friday. We just doing Free Game because, you know, it ain't enough Fridays for the amount of game we give. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're we going to integrate some questions again. Y'all know y'all used to send questions in. So for the future episodes, if you want to send more questions in... We're going to do the ones that's, like, new and fresh. If it's shit that we already answered, you know, we're going to bypass and We're going to get some game, and we're going to talk about where we at in the journey and what's happening, and we're excited to be back. We're excited. Come on. Oh, you want me to do a question now, or you want to just talk? No, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. We can okay. start off with a question. Okay. Unless Should... there's something new. Is there anything new? We got fairgrounds coming up. We do. This Sunday. Yeah. This Sunday. We got two shows. Jeez. We're having the very first backyard show on a Saturday. Yeah. Right. Ooh, that's Church never on happened. Saturday. Yep. Church on Saturday. So so yesterday I asked him if we should um open up the backyard show this this uh one on the fifth because we moved the date up, right? And so the people who were already had tickets, if they couldn't like come on Saturday, then we told them we'll you know, replace their tickets and they can come to the fairground show. So we ended up with like 50 extra slots. It would be kind of fire if you reopened up the tickets and let people do like a flash. I'm going to do that. That would be fire. We just added 50 more tickets. I'm going to do that. Ooh, you heard it here first. Probably not if you're on YouTube. But if you're on <laughs> even, you heard it here first. You heard <laughs> Uh, what else we got going? Oh, we're about to go to Boston and mm-hmm. Atlanta in October. We will yep. be in Atlanta October 13th through the 18th. Through the 18th. And we're going to be in Boston the 11th, the 11th to the 12th. To the 13th to the 12th. We're going to be in Boston the 11th to the 12th. So if you want to do a session, if you got an interview, a podcast, a pop-up, you want to play hoop, you want to play tennis, you want to do anything with LaRussell while I'm in Boston, put that link in. It's an offer sheet in the bio. Put your offer in. Then we in Atlanta, 13th to the 18th. If you want to do time. anything with LaRussell from the 13th to the 18th, pop-up shows, interviews, podcasts, just hang, food review, whatever it is, 13th to the 18th in Atlanta, Put the offer in the bio. We getting it all scheduled in now. And if you ain't in the schedule by the end of the week, we ain't coming. We ain't coming. <laughs> and if you want us to come, you have to fill out the sheet all the way. Like if you don't fill it out or you just leave some of them talking about not applicable or whatever, I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to go to the next person. You know what we should break down to? This is the perfect time. We get a lot of offers mm-hmm. to come Ooh, across the country. right? Yep. So look. I live in California, in the Bay Area. If you make an offer for me to come to New York from California and your offer is only $1,500, $2,000, I'm not coming. It costs me that just to get there. Even $5,000. When you make offers, just kind of consider if you was in the other person's shoes and what it would take for you to do. And just for consideration on anyone asking to book, I usually travel with a team and a band. Just moving in any space, there's five people minimum just for me to, like, do what I do as LaRussell. That's management and video and support and engineer. And then if we're doing a show, I may be bringing a pianist and a violin and a flute and a DJ. It could be upwards from five to ten people, you know. And um, I put on a hell of a show. And with that, you know, sometimes people make an offer that's, that's for a show and it's like, I go beyond the show. I'm actually talking to the people before and after. I'm in the crowd. I'm mingling with people at your event. People will leave your event feeling like it was a great event, even if it wasn't just because La Russell was there. And I make that shit feel like a great event. You feel me? So I just ask when you put the offers in, be considerate of all that. And not just for me, just, you know, because we allow regular people to book us. Just Mm -hmm. if you try to book another artist. Be considerate of that. There's so much that goes into it. But flying from California to the East Coast 
for $1,000, that just don't make no sense. I would say before you even make an offer, look at plane tickets. Look and see what it costs for someone to fly from here to here. That'll give you a good grasp. Then you know, okay, five tickets. Then think about lodging. Okay, he going to have to lodge while he's here. How long he going to have to stay? They're going to probably want to eat while they're here. And then make an adequate offer so you don't have to, like, feel bad if it's not accepted or just wait until, you know, a budget aligns. But think about those things when you go booking an artist. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. And don't book it in comparison to nobody. You know, we had one nigga who was like, but I paid this person this. And it's like, that's not La Russell. He's not going to bring the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's different energies. It's different people involved. It's a different process. So don't make it in comparison to what you paid another artist. It has to be adequate for the artist that you're dealing with. Everybody got different prices and, and, and shit that they do. Yeah. I don't bargain and I'm not arguing with a nigga talking jargon. I don't even have anything to say after that. <laughs> that also goes for like um, features too. It's a, a different spiel because it's just him on the song. But when you guys request features, it is for the feature. It is for the feature only. When you request the feature, he's going to lay the verse. If he likes the, if he likes the song or mm -hmm. the beat. He will lay the verse and then and only then will we reach back out to you and be like, hey, song done. You can send your payment now and we'll send you the session files. It's very, very simple. That is, it's a two step process. It does not include a video. Yep. And we don't send uh, what, what are they like? They be requesting like we snippets don't send and, files prior yeah. to payment. Like we're not, not going to hit you and lie and be like the song done and it's not. If it ain't done, it just, <laughs> you feel me? You won't get that email. We saying it's done, nigga. We're going to send a file. We have no reason to hold the files. <laughs> we ain't going to do nothing. And it's your song. It is your song for exactly. you to release and for you to do with, with it what you wish. When we send the session files, we send what, what he's going to get on the master and on the writing side. And it's your song. Man, and put those offers in. Take advantage. I think in the past three months, I've done over 100 features. I'm probably a one lot. of the only artists at my stature that's allowing people to make offers on a feature and actually send them back and getting them done. And I make it easy. If I don't love the song, you could just send a beat and I'll make the song and then send it back to you and you can have oh, it. God. Same with producers. If you're a producer and you're trying to build your name and get your name up, this is an opportunity to do so because you could really send beats and pay somebody to hop on it that would never generally hop on your beat. This shit ain't existed before. This is new opportunities that didn't exist prior that y'all could take advantage of. I wish I had these kind of opportunities when <laughs> I was coming up, which is why I'm providing them. So tap in. Producers, engineers, artists, if you want a feature, you want somebody on your beat, or you want to mix a record, send that offer in. Make it make sense. When it comes to producers reaching out and just giving you a beat, because this happened previously, somebody like sent in an offer, and he was like, when when you did the song and then I sent it back, he was like, oh, well, um, I'll send the payment. And the only like requirement is that like this song ends up on your next project. No. And I was like, I think you misunderstood. It's for you. It is mm -hmm. your song. It's yours. For you to do with what you wish. Yep. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. since we're breaking things down, we should also explain that, uh, what people get when they receive a gold card and what happens when they invest in stock because we regularly get new yeah. people requesting. So gold cards, gold card. The main perk of a gold card is you have unlimited access to shows. So if you see me in New York and you in New York, you could send an email in and say, hey, I want to attend this show. I'm a gold card member. We're going to verify you and then we're going to send you tickets. If you got a gold card, it comes with you and you could get a plus one ticket to any show. Right. Um, you could also just pull up at the door, but we prefer you email first so we can have a count. But if it's last minute and you rushing, you could just pull up and show your card and we're going to always let you in. On top of that, you get added to a split list. So the split list doesn't guarantee you split. It puts you on a list. So if I'm just randomly going through my stuff and I'm like, let me allocate some, you're on a list. So you eligible to get some. If you want a for sure stock, then you have to put in a stock offer. But the gold card puts you on a list. So a bunch of gold card members just randomly get split you feel me for shit that they ain't expected for it just gets sent out um those splits are perpetual 
for the rest of time. You will be able to come to any show for the rest Perpetual. of time. Take that into consideration when you make an offer. offer. And make that <laughs> adequate. And, you know, gold cards, the prices are going up because we do mm -hmm. more shows and we see people frequent. I have a recurring show, you know, and people come to... 20 shows a year. Some people use the hell out of their gold cards. They, they use the hell out of that card. Year, so it's like, <laughs> I'm no longer selling gold cards for $100. That just don't make sense. You know, that's one show when you have the ability to come to 20, 30 shows. And I want... I want to build my gold card list of people who truly value it and understand what it is, and that's worthwhile, you know? What were you going to say? He could put an offer in. Um, <laughs> LaRussell stock, how that works. LaRussell stock. So you send an offer. For a song. And I know a lot of people don't know how this works. Niggas be like, $10 for this? Yeah, so the no. Russell stock is a perpetual percentage of royalties. So if a song does $5,000 and you own 5% of it, you're going to make $250 off that $5,000. But it's perpetual. So every time the song does an amount of money, you're going to make some money for the rest of your life. So in 10 years, if the song goes viral on TikTok randomly and it has a spike and it does 10 million streams, you're going to make money off of that then as well. And understand that it's a one-time payment for me in exchange for perpetual revenue and I lose my share in it for life to give it to you for one payment. <laughs> you feel me? So it also has to align and make sense. But when you put your offer in, if it gets accepted... We're going to send you an email with your royalties, and you'll have to accept it. It'll come from a distro. Please accept it as immediate as, immediate as possible because it fucks up the payment process. <laughs> it takes a quarter for the first payment to happen because streaming reports quarterly. After that quarter, you'll see a statement every month, and you'll get a payment every month after that perpetually. Yep. I think that's everything. Gold cards, LaRussell stock. Offers. Oh, Private investors. This yeah. is a good opportunity to explain. I I added it to the sheet, but I think it's a good opportunity to say it verbally as well. Private investments are not for anything less than $25,000. Like the private investors are going to receive gold cards. They're going to receive stock splits. They're going to receive show splits. They're going to receive merch splits, subscription splits. It's it's a lot more than $100 worth it's of a an much, investment. It's a, it's a much deeper investment than $100 <laughs> or $1,000 yeah. because we're really trying to find ways to share revenue with people that didn't traditionally exist. You know, it's like there's never been a point where you can invest money into an artist and then they go do 10 shows and you get a percentage off of all those shows as well. So we're really trying to build something new. So it's not a smaller investment. We're looking for people who are serious and believe in what we're doing. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want you to have to sign. I could provide some funding. Let me do this. But it's also for investors. It's not a get rich quick scheme. This is At not all. some shit that's like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to make my money back next month. This is an investment into a company and into a business and into someone that you believe in. So if it's just a money grab, don't even come here. Look the other way because this is me. something that we building. On me. And the way that that process works is you will submit your offer and then you'll receive an email from Good Company confirming that you do want to do that amount. And then you will speak with me to confirm verbally. And then we will move forward on, you know, the details of, of what your investment will entail. Yeah. That was good. Those are all necessary. We touched Dang. them all. We run big business. Yeah. Big business. Yeah. Niggas didn't even know they could split the pie this many ways. Award show. Oh! We planning an award show. You know, con contingent right now, I think I'm looking at December 3rd so we can end the year. Um, Man, this is, this is one of the few artists thrown award shows, if there's any other that exists. But you know, like... I just don't really love how the industry do it. And I, I felt like it would be, regardless of that, I just felt like it would be cool to honor my homies and some of the creatives that I see moving and shaking that I really think is hella dope that I think just deserve and is worthy of an award. So we're going to be giving out some awards and honoring the people that we love and platforms that we think is dope that's been built. And we're going to have some dope performances, real performances, not no backing tracks and shit like that, real performances right. with real music, you know. And we doing our own thing here in the V, so we bringing in the award show. You heard? This is going to be our first one, the GCAs. The GCAs. Ooh, buh, buh, buh. 
you know what's crazy? The last episode, I was pressing all the little sounds on this keypad thing, and they weren't coming out. <laughs> janky, janky promoters. I don't know what happened, but so I got to do them. <laughs> uh, and a second announcement that's going to be held at the Empress Theater, but also something else will be held at the Empress Theater here pretty soon. We just got the dates back. Yeah. yeah. So as you know, the weather's about to change. So it's going to be a little chilly in the backyard. So the backyard residency is over for the year after October. But we bringing a residency to Empress Theater. So we're going to be indoors. That way we ain't got to stop the motion. So every month, we looking at the first Sunday every month still. Come to church. New residency. And we finna drop the tickets in the date soon. So you know how that shit going to go. Sheesh. If you got a go card, you ain't got to worry about that. But if you don't, you know. Announcements, big business. You we heard? Got some questions? Yeah, we do. I'm sorry. I was excited. That's really exciting. Oh, um, let's see. I think that was pretty good. We can do like like. That was 16 minutes. So. Yeah. Wow, just of announcements. That's how much motion a nigga got. That boy in there laying on his stomach. <laughs> he just did that. <laughs> Why did he flip over? Nigga in there laying Ooh, on his stomach. Ooh, this is a good one. Ass up. What's, <laughs> what's the best way to execute your ads to get followers and listeners for Spotify? That's a good one. I think the best way to get spot to get followers and listeners for Spotify is to run a conversion ad. Going to your Spotify link. But um, with that, like, you know, I see people doing it differently. I think that what I did is I take the best piece of content that goes on IG for a song, the one that hits, that I know hit, and I run the ad behind that. Instead of doing like an album cover or some random video promoting the song, take the piece that already hit and then run that conversion ad. When I run a conversion ad, I run mine, not just for Spotify, I run mine to a smart link that leads to all the platforms so people could just find it wherever they see fit. But with that conversion ad, uh, I do a bunch of different targeting. Depending on the type of song it is, I target similar artists and I target platforms that's within that niche, and then I let it run. I usually start with like $50 to $100 a day and just kind of peep the results and see if the song is growing, and I let it go. That was good. Also on Spotify, a great way to get listeners and followers is the marquee and the um, showcase ads. They are a bit expensive, but they they do work. And I feel like if each release you're able to run some marquee and some showcase with whatever budget you can, it just slowly keeps building that that number up until you know it gets to where it feels good for you and it's consistent. You ready for the next one? Yep. What would be a basic blueprint for beginning as an independent artist? Maybe like a give them like a like a five step. I'm starting now as an independent artist. I would say make five great songs. I would say make fifteen songs. Pick five out of those fifteen that you feel really really good about, or do all fifteen. I would say go make a really dope piece of visual content for all of them. And release it before the song even comes out and see which one moves. The one that moves, I would make three or four more pieces of content for that and then release that one to DSPs and let it circulate. If you get a piece that breaks your threshold, start running ass behind that piece of content and then rinse and repeat. And just keep doing that. And I think your shit keep growing off of that. That's all we've done. All I've done is make a shit ton of music and a shit ton of content to support it and ran ass behind the pieces that worked. Um, mix up your content styles Do live mm -hmm. performances Do acoustic sessions Do piano sessions Do radio freestyles Do visualizers Do music videos Do interviews Do every piece of form of content that works Because you might have an interview piece that goes viral That gets you a bunch of fans that Your visualizer can't You know like the, the 
the clip that we had with the child that has autism brought me a whole different fan base mm-hmm. that I wasn't getting from just doing visualizers. So just get off. And that's a piece of content that we couldn't even create. That just had to happen through life. You know, that's why I'm big on like not creating content, but like documenting your life and taking the pieces that really make sense. But outside of that, just keep making dope shit and, and rinse and repeat. That's all it is. If you could get something to move a little bit and run a $10 a day ad behind it until, you know, you get another piece and just keep adding on to that. All I do is make dope pieces, and every time something go, I start running the ad in 30-day intervals. Every time I get a new piece, that shit break the threshold. I go at the end of the week, and the ones that broke through, I'm running the ad for 30 days. So every 30 days, you might see 10 to 12 different ads from me, and I keep on getting new ones every time a new moment is created. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat is as simple as that. Do you but it start with, with great music. Like, if you're not making good shit... It, it ain't nothing you can do. You can run as many fucking ads as you want, and you could do all this extra shit, and it might spike for a bit because it's trendy, but that shit going right back down because it's not great product. What do you feel like is a great song? Like, what are you looking for? Feeling. Mm. I don't think no one knows what a great song is, but everyone can feel what one is. You feel me? Like, what people, based off knowledge, is always subjective. But based off feeling, it's not. You feel me? If I turn the record on right now and all of us start, but you can't deny that. It just makes you move. You feel me? I think it's the feeling behind it. Yeah, I agree. Do you feel like smoking weed affects your creativity, motivation, and or work ethic? Yeah, it affects all of those positively and negatively. Like, I've been partially clean for two months now. Like, I used to smoke every day, like three or four times a day, and now... I'll smoke seldom on occasion, you know, and I'll hit the weed once or twice when I do. And, um, yeah, it affects all of that shit. It affects your work ethic because you just, the level of care that you generally have is more laxed. Like, when I'm high, I'm not really pressed to do nothing, but I'm also free. Like, when I'm riding and I'm high, I feel good and I'm free, but it's also, like, my just <laughs> my focus and my level of care that I need to give shit doesn't really, you know, exist in the same manner. And that's how I feel like you end up making like records that's just like the same thing over and over. Mm. And it just start your sword start getting a bit dull because your effort isn't the same when you hide. Right. Um Yeah. You get like lackadaisical. Exactly. I like that. That's word. the best way to put it. Lackadaisical. Good word. Yeah. You know exactly what that word means just by how it sounds. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. What's the most consistent obstacle you found yourself facing throughout your journey as an artist? The most consistent obstacle I found myself facing throughout my journey is myself. In what capacity? Everything else is nothing. In the capacity of just like getting out of my own way. You know, like now I have 500 songs that we all be like, nigga, but they're not out into the world because I be in my own head of like, man, but this, this and this and oh, I got to do and I got to deliver. Oh, and maybe we should do a deal here so we get, you know, like it's it's me. It's never nothing else. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad we're on this topic. I hate the rollout shit. I hate it. We should never do it again. You such a funny ass I nigga. I know. Listen, I you. changed my mind, you the though. the reason we here. Okay, that's crazy. Because you it have the final say you. on when everything. When I was on, I was like, bro, fuck all that shit. Man, like, man fuck I'm all that you, shit. If we just tried in there, that's what I was telling you. Fuck all that shit. That shit is so janky and annoying. I hate it, it. I just feel like It's slow rollouts, everything. Roll out, and we do our own rollouts yes. that work. But when we do it that way... It's Ugh. like almost basically saying as an artist, I'm relying on you to help me with my shit. And it's like, we're not waiting on them niggas it to feel play like we shit, waiting. On shit on somebody else. And they might not even do nothing. Oh, my God. Man, fuck all that shit. I fuck hate all it. that shit. All never that again. Six week, eight week, I hate it. Never, never Same. again. Never. Never again. We finna unload on that bitch. And, and I'm finna show niggas like, nigga, you could do it however the fuck you want to do it. Ain't no rules. Fuck all that shit. And the Don't only on reason, the only reason they be like, I need six. Six to eight weeks to pitch it 
to brands who should be even, on top of great music. Land. Right. It's like, bro, you want me to pitch it to you because you're being flooded but the thing by is like, like we're waiting to get on a playlist full of music that oh we don't even my listen to. Gosh. Or like. And that's full of a bunch of spots. We have to wait four to six weeks to get on the playlist because the labels bought mm-hmm. all the other slots. So there's only three slots for them to go through and be like, okay, well, you know, we found a song that we like, but and it's like, bruh, I don't want to be on the playlist then. I don't want to be on a playlist. I don't want to be on a page. I don't want to be talked about go, on your blog. Go to the people. And that's that's what I've been It's like, what the fuck? When did I get to this point where that even matters to me? Who like, cares? like there's two ways to build your profile on DSPs. It's like you either get playlists and in support of the DSP, or you just keep dropping music so people keep coming back to your shit and then your numbers just keep growing, nigga. You feel me? Like, that's what happens. That's what happens. And it's like, we make the moments. We don't wait for them to happen. Exactly. So why, like, yeah. Valor should have been out. It should have been out. Yeah. It should have been out, over with, done to yeah. the world, enjoyed, yeah. all celebrated, and all the next that. one all should be that, out. All that shit. I'm, I'm done with it. Never again. Y'all heard yeah. it here. Yeah. It worked for some people, and I think that, right? you know, those people need it. But for me, it's like, I was the nigga breaking all the rules, so it's like, why start Ugh. following rules why and would abiding I hop in the by? Box? It? Right, and it was because of you. That's what I'm like. It don't make it make no sense. That's crazy. No, for real. T is the one who convinced me to like start playing. But you want to know what's even crazier though? I wasn't even and there. And I respect her so much and value her opinion. I wasn't I'm like, even there when the Hitmaker deal was done. I didn't even know that he was talking to Hitmaker I'm not until even he was them. like, "We've been doing this way before them." What? Nigga. <laughs> yeah, I was what? To say my own ass. <laughs> Next question. Oh, you right. I was going to get all off topic. Three more. What distribution do you suggest for an artist starting off? Um... Starting off, TuneCore or DistroKid? Still? Yeah. I like this joke. Yeah, I think starting off because you can't even you can't get access to the other ones until you start really moving this. As uh, two loss, two loss is really great too. Ooh. Two loss is really great too. <laughs> Sorry. All of them, all the entry level DSPs is good, and they all have like you could level up in a few of them. So. Any 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 really work and make sense. They all do the same shit. You don't really start getting like client services until you start moving and shaking shit. This is an interesting. I don't know. I feel like maybe you highlighted this one. Are you worried that big record companies will try to buy your stock away from the fans? No. I would. What is that even possible? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's highlighted in here. And you know, I was that like, would be that would be a different level of innovation if the labels came and said, hey, we want to buy a share in that because we love that song so much. That'd be different. I feel like that fucks the game up. That's kind of oh crazy. God. But they can I put out too much music for them to do so. Yeah, because they would want you to hold it so they could try to make it into, into something. Which is crazy as fuck, because it's like Without the six weeks, you could start working a song, and if it start moving, it's like you should be able to get the same. Like everybody just need to do their fucking job, right. nigga. If we making the best music and shit slapping and yanking, and everybody talking about, oh that young nigga on fire, why the fuck do I have to? Like you as an editor should be like, man, we got to be on top of that. This is what the culture fucking with. This is what niggas is on. Everybody talking he over there with Snoop. Like nigga, you not doing your job, right? <laughs> This shit on the playlist that's like, nigga, are we serious? Are we representing hip hop? Are we serious? Niggas should be fired. They're serious. They're actually serious. And that's why niggas is getting fired. Niggas is getting fired. Oh, and they God. let niggas go because <laughs> niggas played so much. <laughs> Dang, they are getting fired. Oh, God. And it's rightfully so. Niggas was in there doing disservices to the culture and to music. That shit was some bullshit. It's too much bullshit that was going on. Way too much. It ain't no way in fucking hell some of the shit that's been getting signed should have been getting signed. You niggas got niggas who only made one. How you sign a nigga with one? He only made one song ever in his life. (laughs) 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 This is his very first one. (laughs) Insane. 
How can, if I'm an artist, how can I get to the backyard to perform or to one of your residency shows? That's buy a ticket. Ooh. I mean, buying a ticket ain't going to guarantee you perform, but it at least puts you in a space. If you want to get in the game, you should probably show up to the game. Ooh. I was just telling, um, if you guys don't know who Joseph Solomon is, he's like a really dope artist. Um I was just telling him because I brought him to the backyard show that we did in L.A. And I was telling him the only way to guarantee that you get to perform at a show is if somebody in good company vouches for you, the wrestle himself or one of us. Um, or, you know, you show up at the show. And when he asks who want to get on the mic, don't be scared. Yeah, that is the only way is to literally be in the T. Don't send it to one of the homies. Then just be in the arena. And as soon as you hear that, can I get on that mic? Nigga, you better run. It's always a nigga who want to come third or fourth after a few people go. Nigga, yeah, that's no, too no, late. No, 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 no. As soon as you see that mic go up, you better. Hey, it's my time. After number three, the mic about to go back to the You don't want to be the fourth nigga in the train. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be the second or third nigga in the train. You feel me? <laughs> Kissed him. <laughs> <laughs> and that will conclude this lovely episode. <laughs> this episode will be called Fourth Nigga in a Train. That's the best, that is the title of this episode. Why you like it? <laughs> it's, been another, it's been another marvelous episode if of you, Free Game, you heard? If you would like your question answered, there is a link in both of our bios where you can click... Uh, Ask us a question for free game, and we'll, and we'll read it. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Nigga glitched. <laughs> we haven't eaten yet. We're about to go get some food after you this. You heard? This is our second episode this week. Yep. Niggas getting well fed. We back at this shit. We back at it. Ooh-wee. All right. Cut the camera, bro.